Hey folks, Carl Kischel here, and welcome to this week's edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. Researching the cloud blog so you don't have to. So this week, lots of great information to share, including an update on Windows 365. Pricing has been announced, and we're going to go through a quick tutorial on how to set it up. We'll also talk about some Azure Virtual Machine availability and some transparency, root cause analysis capabilities that are now available in Azure Health Services, a new Azure Managed Private Link offering, software and inventory agentless uh, capabilities now with Azure Migrate, some Teams updates, one that's very important regarding your recordings, and much more. So with that, let's jump into this week's updates. The links to all the updates can be found in the description of the video. So our first update here is regarding some transparency that's now available within Azure Health Services for virtual machines. And this is a fairly lengthy blog post that gets into some of these new capabilities on publishing root cause analysis that is now available in the Azure Resource Health. So this is a, a great opportunity for those virtual machines that may have either rebooted, aired out, or otherwise have caused an error. And uh, leveraging some of the built-in capabilities of the Azure platform to generate a root cause analysis and publish it for that specific virtual machine. So pretty cool information, something that's um, fairly unique to um, the IaaS capabilities of Azure. And uh, definitely check out the link to this blog post for all the details on how this is created and how to leverage it to understand failures for virtual machines in the Azure environment. Now generally available, Azure Managed Hardware Security Module Service uh, and the private link. So this is a capability that allows you to create a direct peered link between your organization's network and the Microsoft network. Uh, so ensuring a private connection between those two services with no public internet access. And the, uh, the neat thing about this particular service uh, and leveraging platform as a service within Azure is that these type of network uh, information and uh, traffic now be routed through this private endpoint. So there's no need for gateways, NAT devices, express route, VPNs, or public IP addresses. So check out the link for more info on this new offering. Software inventory and agentless dependency analysis is now generally available with Azure Migrate. So if you're not familiar with Azure Migrate, it is a free tool that allows you to do an analysis of your existing on-premises environment um, focused on virtual machines, applications, et cetera, and provide you with some telemetry and details on what it would take to migrate those on-premises workloads into Azure. So it's a free tool. Uh, does not only the analysis, but also performs the actual migration as well. And within this particular um, capability is now the um, inventory capability that's now exposed with Azure Migrate. So Azure Migrate will do software inventory and also um, virtual machines that do not depend on an agent that information is now available with Azure Migrate. So check out the link to the Azure Migrate documentation for more info on this new feature. Next, we have some roadmap updates regarding Microsoft Teams. And this first update regarding Teams Q&A, and this is specifically for Teams webinars and meetings. And this will be a new application that will be coming out uh, within the next month or so. It's currently in development. And this will allow you to add a Q&A application to any Teams webinar or meeting for users to create moderated or unmoderated Q&A experiences using this new application. The next Teams roadmap update is this uh, other feature currently in development. Again, it's uh, slated for release within the next month called Content from Camera. And this will allow you to share content um, from whiteboards, documents, uh, et cetera, during a meeting. Your machine, laptop, PC, et cetera, will need a built-in camera or some type of USB attached camera uh, focused on those particular artifacts, but allow you to draw in 
that as a, as a secondary imaging uh, or presentation method, presentation endpoint within your team's meeting. So be on the lookout for this feature coming within the next month or so. And our next update regarding Microsoft Teams is the new recording experience. This is something we've talked about before been published uh, fairly well, I believe. Um, administrators have seen admin notices coming through their console, uh, emails, uh, etc. So this particular blog post is another reminder that as of August 16th, new Teams meeting recordings will be saved to OneDrive and SharePoint. And this uh, blog post gets into details on you know, why that's happening but also how to leverage this new functionality to your advantage, particularly with the new streaming platform that's now built on SharePoint Online. So check out the link for all the details on this new feature and the implications for your users who record their Teams meetings. Detecting room occupancy with Azure Percept. So a couple updates here regarding Azure Percept and uh, blog posts here give you some tutorials on how to leverage the platform. So Azure Percept, if you're not familiar with this, is both a software development kit that includes hardware. It's, you can purchase it through the, uh, the link that's in the blog post. The, uh, the hardware kit is basically a high definition camera that's specifically tuned for use for Azure. Um, it also includes a microphone, audio array, Etc. But I thought this particular blog post was interesting on giving you some ideas on how to use the platform and Percept in an IoT scenario to detect uh, how many people might be in a particular room. So a great way to check on occupancy um, and report back on rooms. And if anything else, it's a, it's a neat little project to get started with IoT. The other project I wanted to share with you regarding Azure Percept is this blog post and tutorial on how to create a traffic monitoring application with Azure Percept. So, uh, you know, an application for something like this could be where you're monitoring uh, traffic and just wanted to get a sense of, hey, how many vehicles are coming into my organization, my campus, uh, and maybe delineating buses from shuttles, from cars, bicycles, et cetera. And uh, again, this is a, a really neat blog post that gets into the hardware and software development kit aspects of Azure Percept and how to create a nice little IoT project to get started. All the code, directions, so on are fully explained in the blog post with links to GitHub. We have some updates regarding Ninja Training for Office 365 Defender. And this is a upcoming training, which is presented in various modules over the next couple of weeks. And it's, it's fairly detailed. So if you do want to become a ninja regarding Microsoft 365 and Defender, something definitely to check out. Likewise for Microsoft Defender Endpoint Ninja training is also available. Some free Power BI education and training now available. Something you can sign up for a virtual meeting and provide some guidance on not only how to use Power BI, but also how to evangelize Power BI for your end users within your environment. So definitely check out the webinar. And also wanted to highlight um, the author here, Kendra, who has graciously volunteered um, her particular time you wanted to get more detailed, more customized Power BI sessions for your organization. So her email address is shown here, and uh, she has publicly reached out to say, hey, if you want to learn more about customization for your organization around Power BI sessions, give me a shout. And last but not least, a tutorial for Windows 365 and how to set up the admin and management features for cloud PCs. So this is a, a pretty comprehensive tutorial on how to create the admin experience and management experience for Windows 365. It's presented by the Microsoft Mechanics team. All the links, agenda items, uh, et cetera, on how to set this up for the platform are in this blog post.
And that concludes this edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. Hope you enjoyed this week's session. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you kept up to date on all of the publishing future updates that we will be presenting. We do these basically on a weekly basis. And um, if you want to be kept up to speed on when they are released, usually I release them at the end of the week. Uh, feel free to subscribe as well. If you have any comments, suggestions, etc., drop a comment in the comment box. I take all comments seriously. I read everything. And uh, also feel free to reach out to me via, via LinkedIn or Twitter at Carl Kishel. With that, I wish you well. Thank you so much for watching the video. And we will catch you next time. Take care.